you want to say hi to people? No? Okay, well, um, Fred doesn't want to say hi to you because he's tired. I won't force him. But to all, to all 13 of you who are here on this lovely Sunday afternoon, um, the overalls that I bought in California went through the washer and unfortunately the grommet that was attached to the overalls has this like little silicone thing in the middle and I guess through the uh, violent actions of the dryer and the washer it fell off um, which makes me very sad but a lot of people wrote in saying these are really easy to find and to buy and I don't think I'm gonna buy it, you know? I think I'm just gonna try to stitch it back into place. And obviously it's gonna look a little bit patchy, but that's okay because I'm a patchy person. I was also looking at my button collection and I was thinking maybe I could do some arts and crafts deal where I just kind of sew like a little eyelet to reinforce the ripped edges of this and maybe sew some buttons onto the overalls because they're cute but they do look a little mental asylum-y um, and apron-y so maybe we could jazz it up with some buttons. You guys know I'm a really scrappy person and I do a lot of DIY stuff and so anything that gives me a chance to work with my own hands instead of taking it out to someone I want to patch it up myself even though it might be a crap job I find pleasure in just the act of doing it so I also have this bracelet that broke and these bracelets have these kind of like medieval uh, paintings of women and angels on them that somebody in high school gave to me. I think we actually went to middle school together too, but she gifted me this bracelet for my birthday one year and unfortunately I broke it because it was tied together by this kind of clear elastic. So I was thinking we could also just sew these on because they're really cute. Um, but that's all. I'm also going to snack because my friend came by and we hung out for quite a while just talking about, you know, selves and society and why we want the things we want and why we work when we hate our work and uh, what a full sense of security society tries to sell us and uh, all in the meantime he brought some pastries and this is the one piece that is left after we gorge ourselves on it but I'm gonna snack on that and if any of you watch my weekly diary of everything that I ate in a week I made some more pandan sticky rice and I poured some tahini on top so I might eat that too. I actually made this sticky rice in the microwave. So if you guys uh, never made sticky rice before in the microwave, you don't need any special equipment to make sticky rice in the microwave. I it's delicious. Mm. I do want to get some cranberry jam though. BRB. Still making my way through that cranberry jam that I made for my cookie testing. This is made with Truvia, the sugar that made me poop uncontrollably. So we're just gonna try not to eat too much of it because yikes. But it's pretty good. You saw this in my weekly food diary too. I have a lot of it. It never ends. This is the life of recipe development and testing y'all. You just end up with like 8,000 tons of something. And then you either throw it out or you just eat it over a number of years. Oh, they aren't designed to go in the washing machine, I see. Well, I guess sooner or later they're gonna fall off and I'll just replace the other side with buttons too, you know? The more you learn, thank you guys for sharing all of your knowledge with me in the various different ways. And for those of you who showed up late, they're spread. 
He's sleeping. There. Now you get both of us in the scene. Ta-da. Hello, Czech Republic. Yeah, I mean, Truvia has like chicory root fiber, which makes me not happy. I'm going to be pretty quiet for the most part, unless, because I don't want to stab my fingers, but... If you guys want to give me a talking topic, I would be happy to talk. Sorry, I have no energy to join. Bill's lost, so I'm going to. Oh, no. Aaron's not. game of the season. I'm so sorry, Aaron. I will be lit. I will be retreating to my cave of sadness until next week. AKA 20 feet away on your computer? No, I'm, I'm renting a cave in the Catskills where I will go anytime Bill's lose. Is Fred invited? Um. If only it's, it's a cave of sadness, so it's only for sad people. Is he oh. sad? Oh, well, I can come then, right? Mm. I'm sad, Aaron. Yeah. I'm a sad person. Yeah, can, can I? Everyone but June is allowed in my cave of sadness. Anyway, Aaron is sad because the Bills lost their first game of the football season, and uh, this is the only time that I ever see Aaron in invested in sports at all is when the Bills play because he comes from Rochester, Rochester, upstate New York or western New York. So, um, we shall give him his space. Oh, oh God! Yeah, okay, Aaron. <laughs> um, some people saw our live stream from the hotel in LA and they were like, why is Aaron being such an asshole? And Wait, I'm like... Why was I being an asshole about it? Because... Can I explain to the viewers? Yeah. And then you can get by on context and maybe your memory will pull through. Yeah. We had agreed before I went live because it was a very long day for both of us. It was like the first full day we had in LA that uh, Aaron would not be appearing on stream and I would go solo on the stream and I would not be involving him or pointing the camera towards him where he was resting on the bed because we had a long day. And I had explained that and at one point during the live stream, I asked Aaron a question, and Aaron said, I'm not in this stream. And I, you know, left him alone. But some people took, took that one sentence and was like, why is Aaron being oh, X, Y, and Z? And I'm just like... People will complain about anything, huh? Yes, I'm just like, guys, boundaries, we set them, I violated them, the onus is on me for any blame whatsoever, and not on Aaron. Okay. We in the society have grown so used to being nice to other people at the expense of our own necessities and, you know, just, it, why? Why? Um, and it's okay to not be nice all the time. It's okay to be an asshole sometimes. Um, who's, who has Stockholm Syndrome, Mary and me? Do I have Stockholm Syndrome or does Aaron? Because I've been a fair amount of bitch, too, that you guys have not seen. Look, can I just remind you that I met Aaron in 2011 and it has been 10 years since we, we've met each other and it's been a long time. That's 3,600 days that we spent with each other and it's... What kind of relationship do y'all have that you think this is uh, abnormal? Because I, I truly want to know, does everybody out there have a perfect relationship where you, you never have quips or fights or, you know, exchanges where it's uncomfortable? Even with coworkers, you have these interactions. So why, why wouldn't you have it with people close to you who are much more comfortable being vulnerable in your presence and telling you the truth? The truth is not always pretty. We are not pretty people all of the time. It is, uh, it takes effort to be pretty all the time. Whether or not it's physical or emotional and psychological and behavioral. So, I would just like people to like take a chill pill, you know? It's okay to be bad once in a while. 
it's normal. <sighs> yeah, and guys, I obviously am a oversharer, and it is unfair of me to expect my partner, who has not asked to be involved to such a degree, in my oversharing. And it is unrealistic to expect anyone else in my life to match my degree of sharing. Uh, I think you would agree that I am quite an abnormal case in how much I share. My mom would tell me that it is unhealthy for me to overshare like this. I'm sure a lot of you would agree with my mother. And I'm sure a lot of you would not share to the degree to which I have shared. Ooh, look at my, look at my weird stitches. It'll do, it'll hold. Um, Yeah, and it's like, it's fine. We accept people, no matter how much they choose to share, as long as they are not throwing around ad hominem attacks at every little thing that we do. And as much as I would like to say that comments don't affect me, and as much as I do say that comments don't affect me, at the end of the day, everything that I read affects me, you know? It's like, we come into contact with things and whether or not we're conscious of it, those things change us. Even things that we don't agree with change us. Over time, we become eroded, just like rock becomes eroded by water. Not in one instance, but over time and repeatedly, yes. So let's just keep that all in mind. Um, so anyway, happy Sunday. That was my beginning spiel. You can give me a topic for consequent or subsequent spiels. I am slowly having a little bit of Sunday scaries, which is um, why I said I'm gonna snack and sew and go live and hold the space for myself to relieve my anxiety and to also Welcome over whoever wants to join. So welcome. Hello, South Africa. Um, ooh, I missed the stitch. I will go back for you, my dear. Sunday brings out anxiety because uh, it's followed by Monday, which is work, which a lot of us don't want to do because we hate our work, because it causes a lot of cognitive dissonance if we don't believe in the work that we do, and uh, oftentimes it pays shit, and it makes us miserable, and it brings on a lot of trauma and stress. <laughs> I'm sewing um, my overalls that I purchased in California. The grommet fell off in the laundry. Is that how you pronounce it? It was the first time I had seen that word when people DM'd me and they were like, that, that's easy to fix. And I was like, oh, I didn't know, thank you. I, I truly didn't know that it was easy to fix. But it involves buying stuff and I'm like, I don't wanna buy stuff. So I'm just gonna use the trash that I already have at home to patch it up. Grommet. Yay. Humans are always disappointing because our expectations are too high. That's why. And so that is why I say I don't like humans and I keep my expectations low for them. Does anyone else miss having Trump for president because we got to see just what a shit show our government actually was because he was an idiot who got really transparent about the fucked up situation in our government? Because I was just having a chat with my friend and we were both like, yeah, eh, we don't know if Biden's that much better. Same shit's going on, they just package it more beautifully, which makes us think it's more cohesive and coherent. Um, I have not read any Ram Dass. And just to be clear, I am not a Trump supporter. 
I am also not a Biden supporter. Um, but I think the here's how Bernie can still win. <laughs> but I think the idiocy that Trump really made clear manifested in a lot of like truths that we had not up until then seen as normal citizens. Um, He was upsetting you on the daily. Yeah. He sure was. He was also hilarious, though, if he wasn't fucking up lies left and right. Anybody recommends any places for Philly? Um, that food hall, what is it called? Well, they... Whoever's asking that should check out Mark's videos. Yeah, Mark Weens. Mark Weens went to Philly. You should watch his videos. He went to a lot of really great spots. Um, He went. Philly is amazing sandwiches. So, um, I stopped reading the news because not not because of Trump, but because the world is just devastatingly dark. You know. Trump just made it easy for us to digest information because he was dumb. And so he spelled it out for us on a uh, elementary level. He used simple words that we weren't accustomed to hearing. And all at once we understood finally why the world was so awful. Is Fred gassy? Um, I don't know. I guess he does look kind of pudge pudge. Is it because I gave him too many treats since I came back? He really did a number on us. He would not stop meowing all night. He's gotten way more vocal since we've gotten back. I'm not sure what's going on. I also um, cleaned the apartment with Aaron. We did a lot of laundry yesterday, and today I moved off the bed. I moved the bed out, and I started uh, mopping underneath, and I found two dried puddles, what what looked to be, like, maybe hairball puddles, but... um, So he definitely left us some treats. Pat versus Gino's, but also Mark went to a lot of places that wasn't the two main uh, popular spaces and they looked even better if I may say so. So, um. Hello, Lauren. Welcome. Welcome to our lazy Sunday broadcast on which Jew will eat sticky rice with cranberry sauce and tahini as well as these weird yam crisps that she got in California. Look at them. They're by Lay's but they're like Chinese all over them. Yam made out of yam and apparently it is tomato flavored which I go crazy for. I love tomato flavored and it is product of China so this is an imported item. I bet it wasn't this expensive in China though. I paid um I think 2.19 for this bag which would almost be like 20 Chinese uh yuans and uh, I can't imagine a bag of chips costing that much in China but who knows. Uh, what's also really interesting is not only is there a notch to open the bag up here, there's a notch to open the bag here too. And I'm guessing it's because the chips don't actually start until like less than halfway down the bag. So I paid two dollars for what's maybe 40 chips. Um, I'm not getting a new bed anytime soon, y'all. The bed is fine. The mattress is shit, but uh, I don't have any back pain from it, so it's pretty good. I would love to add some Chinese sausage, but all I have is a Slim Jim that I stole from the airport lounge. Remember that fiasco? Um, I use, I use she, her pronouns. Uh, I have been called sir before when I shaved off my hair. When I had short hair, I got mistaken for a man a lot. And, uh, it was shocking the first time, the first couple of times it happened to me, but I didn't mind it, honestly. Gender is a construct, y'all. I don't fucking give a shit. So, you can call me a man if you want. Or they. 
I will respond to anything as long as I know that you are calling me out. I don't really know what it means to be non-binary. I've never even thought about it, you know. I was wondering if I was raised with more open values, if my parents were less, you know, Chinese in that conservative way, if I would be a lesbian. Maybe, I don't know. On a, on a uh, almost monthly basis, I wonder if I potentially could be a lesbian and I just haven't realized it. But I have never really felt any sexual attraction towards women. I've thought that women are pretty, but I think I'm just asexual. At least for now, I know I'm asexual. But who knows what future me will become because gender is fluid and so is sexuality. So never say never. Yes, a lot of people have told me I can buy grommets. I just don't want to buy shit, <laughs> but thank you. Are there many gay Asians? I don't know. A lot of them might be closeted because it's still not quite uh, acceptable socially in a lot of Asian countries, but... How, how, there's, pro there's probably as many gay Asians as there are gay anyone else. Yeah, probably. I don't think it really varies that much based on where you are geographically. I think it just varies depending on the country and the culture that you come from, whether or not there are more closeted gay people. Um, because we still somehow feel like it's okay to uh, trash people based on their identities. Oh, we got a Gaijin in the house. Welcome, Gaijins. Um, so that's, uh, that's my shit stitch. Definitely missed a few spots here and there. Like, right here. But I enjoy this. This is very meditative for me. I'm going to tie it up. And maybe try to reinforce that part that I missed. Caucasian. I like that. We're getting really funny with this. Oh, yeah. Um, my eczema has been spreading, guys. It's always been localized to my hand for the past three, four years, but lately it's spread to my wrist, and I'm very scared. Because once it starts spreading, it just might not stop, huh? Such is life. Hello, Ian. I need to get some scissors to chop this up. The RV. Wow, I really fucked up that last stitch. Whoops. I guess this is why you have professionals.
Has building a channel around cooking changed your view or enjoyment of cooking at all? I mean, I've cooked for a living for many years. I was in restaurants for four and a half years. And then I uh, went into food media with Delish. And I was, um, I still am at Delish, obviously. So it's my, my job as a food, I guess, professional has shifted. And definitely my enjoyment of cooking has shifted with it as well. But I would, I would say only during the pandemic when I've been allowed to film stuff at home and do budget eats and stuff like that, have I currently um, morphed into my current philosophy of cooking, which is you don't really need recipes. Even when I was working in restaurants, my food philosophy was very different. I was very intimidated to cook and make stuff for other people to see because I was kind of like ashamed at my own perceived lack of cooking skills. So I totally understand when people feel intimidated to cook because I think we sell an entire industry and culture and uh, story about what it means to cook professionally and what it means to cook well. All those things are in quotes, scare quotes by the way. And it's made us afraid to um, explore for ourselves and experiment for ourselves. Much like how society tells us there are certain life paths that are more acceptable than others and then we just stick to those narratives of what it means to be successful in the society. And it doesn't always turn out to be true, you know, it's just what other people tell us and we, we, we bought into it because we were told that's what we should believe, but I think it's time we figured out for ourselves what we actually want to do and what brings us the most joy. I still love cooking, you know, like we came back from the trip and I made sticky rice because I just wanted to make something so that I could feed myself. That, that was the point of cooking, by the way, is feeding yourself. Somebody just says, I throw random shit together and if it doesn't kill me, it's a success. Exactly. That is the definition of success when it comes to cooking. Cooking is surviving. on your grocery trip were you sick and tired of restaurant food while you were away I mean no it was all delicious stuff but I gotta say the last two days I really ate myself silly and I did not feel good I still don't feel hungry um and I have to be honest if you watch my food diary you know I have issues around food and going on these trips sometimes trigger my disordered eating thoughts and patterns because it introduces a lot of um, variables to my routine. Um, I obviously want to taste everything because I it's it brings me joy, but like also eating everything and trying not to throw anything away also brings me a lot of physical discomfort and like all of that imbalance of food intake is can be can be triggering sometimes. So that is still something that I have to like work out with myself. On previous trips when I go with Aaron, sometimes I have a lot of what we term food regret where I see something I want to eat and then I don't buy it because I feel like I can't finish it and I can't, you know, eat it all. And um, I'm trying to grow out of that and I'm trying to treat these trips as not only a uh, personal re relaxation period, uh, I also treat it as like food research in a way because it is what I do for a living and the only way to expand my knowledge of food and my experience of food is is to eat the food and try the food so um, trying to be better every day and not better for anyone else but myself because I am the only person who has to live with me Oops. That's the 
wrong place for the stitch to go. Um, how do you guys cook sticky rice? Do you guys actually have steamers? Or do you just cook it in a pot of water? Have you made sticky rice at home? I'm always curious because I don't have a steamer at home. I just managed to use non-steamer items to steam my food. I also tend to eat one thing over and over, yeah. I once ate a whole year of peanut butter and jelly in high school. And then I moved on to a whole year of uh, tuna fish sandwiches. Microwave rice bowls of sticky rice. Are those pre-packaged rice bowls? There are more than one way to cook a thing. I've learned so much from comments uh, left on Budget Eats about food and other cuisines and ingredients. I don't even think I realize how much I've learned, but I read them and like people will just tell me random things and then, you know, it's kind of like adding to your toolbox. You might not need it then but it'll pop up in your life again sometime later fascinating those are the moments where the internet makes sense to me where it feels like a community other times when people tell me i'm in a toxic toxic relationship and i need to leave not so much but uh Also, when people tell me that MSG will kill me, also not so much. You know, what will kill me is unaffordable health care. I show my anger and nervousness too much too. <sighs> Still learning on how to uh, regulate my own emotions, but maybe I don't need to control it so much. Maybe it's not the emotions that I need to control. Maybe it's the triggering things that I need to be aware of. Maybe it's time that I need to be even more honest with myself um, and allow myself to come to grips with what has always haunted me in a way. Usually when I'm angry at other people, it's because there's some unresolved shit within myself that was pressed on. And in refusing to acknowledge that and in trying to repress it, I then just take the easy way out and to uh, formulate that discomfort into anger and then I just vomit that anger all over other people. So it takes time and you need the space also to be safe with yourself to work that shit out. Yeah, I mean emotions are fine. But when they are just a costume for your actual hurt inside, that's when they have the potential to be extremely unhealthy. I haven't used cassava much, actually. I would like to explore it more. I have a whole bag of cassava flour in my freezer that I bought to make more pao de queijo. Um, but I haven't gotten around to it yet. I'm, I'm so bad when it comes to stockpiling ingredients. But it's always fun to have random ingredients in the house because whenever I get bored, I can just make shit with it. 
And also having these lives sometimes is uh, one more reason for me to explore different things because then I can just explore it with everybody who's watching too. It's like we're learning all together. Yeah, Fred doesn't really fit on his house anymore. When he first came into our live, z lives, um, he was scrawnier and he fit much better. But now, uh, first his feet didn't fit and now his tush doesn't fit. His tail drops off sometimes, but he still likes it. We just did laundry yesterday and I just washed the blanket because we came back and it was coated in thread fur. And uh, it is currently coated again, so I don't even know why I did the laundry. Useless endeavors. I ended up eating the sapotes. Unfortunately, I gave three of them away. And um, I was thinking about bringing them back, but after we got kicked off of our plane, and I retrieved the luggage and I was unpacking to get my toiletries out for the night. I discovered that I thought they were unripe and they were sturdy enough, but the skin was actually very fragile. Like a viewer told me to be careful, but I totally ignored that because I didn't think they were ripe, but they were ripe enough that um, all the jaggy stuff in my backpack poked through them. And so I knew that they wouldn't survive the trip back. Um, so we just ate them in LA and they were quite delicious when they're yellow. They're extremely sweet Creamy in consistency kind of like a cross between a ripe pear and um, Like a very Nice firm nectarine um, and when they're green they can still be creamy, but not as sweet so very fascinating fruit it tastes pretty different kind of like a banana green versus yellow um mm, i didn't love love spicy food i used to like spicy food a lot but i can't eat it anymore because of my eczema aaron has an extreme love of spicy food i don't know where that spicy love developed but he's definitely the spice head between us two there. That should hold pretty well. Looks really reinforced. Are sapotes from Asia? I don't know. I feel like I thought they were a Mexican thing, but I could be wrong. Do you know where sapotes are from, Aaron? Aaron's going to do the Google for us because we're too lazy. Um, Mexico, Central America, and northern parts, parts of South America. Okay. It is from, the word sapote is from a Nahuatl word. Nahuatl is, word. Uh, a, uh, indigenous Mexican language. Okay, indigenous Mexican fruit. There you have it. Thank you, Aaron, and thank you, Internet. Okay, I always suck at um, ending stitches, but I did my best. And there we have it. So one grommet and one, one very poorly sewn. I wanna double knot this actually. Can I double knot? But now we can start to embellish this with buttons if we'd like. Hello, x -tall. Okay, so be honest with me. Those of you who actually watch uh, the edited videos that I put on this channel, which have been your favorite kinds? Did you, so, so far I, I feel like there's four kinds. I feel like rock bottom is the narrative free walking videos where it's just scenes of me walking through New York City. I don't think those get ma very many views. And then we have like instructional videos like the how to reheat your pizza one. 
where you know we do a very quick little cooking tip thing and then we have the uh, Aaron and I go randomly out to eat somewhere and we do a little food review intro and then we have the epically long food diary type which you know is feature length kind of like budget eats but not at all like budget eats because it's just me a one-woman operation putting it together um, so I did not fix the backpack no I'm I wrote out to Osprey they haven't gotten back to me I don't think I'm gonna try to fix it if there's a chance they can fix it for me so Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Cool. Well, I'm glad you guys like the variety. And I know a lot of other people like to um, do separate channels for different content, but I know that's better for the algorithm on YouTube if you want maximal success, but I kind of don't care. So I'm just going to keep posting random shit. And you guys can let me know what you like. And maybe it will affect what kind of content I put out in the future, but until then, I'm just going to keep doing what I want to do. But it's good to know that you guys like it. It's like what I tell my mom, and Aaron sometimes too, is like, don't buy stuff for me thinking that I will like it. Buy stuff for yourself, and if I happen to like it, then I will eat it with you or share it with you. But first and foremost, always buy the thing for yourself that you know you will like. And that's the way that I'm approaching these videos is I want to um, just film whatever I want to film. And then if you guys enjoy it, great. Doubly great. But if you guys don't enjoy it, then at least I will enjoy it. I find your flat quite empty. Is this a choice to be minimalist? No, Joan. We're just lazy and we used to move around a lot before when Aaron and I made less money. We used to room with roommates and the roommates were almost always Craigslist strangers in New York City and a lot of them were not ideal. And so we used to move around a lot and so we never invested in expensive furniture because we moved around a lot and we wanted to be able to just like pack up and leave whenever if the room roommate situation turned out to be not great. So even when we got our own place, you know, you know me, I don't like throwing shit out. So we just stuck with our cheap Ikea bed. These cushions, these sofa cushions were from middle school when my parents moved and we had to throw out the sofa because it didn't fit. We have Ikea dressers. We have some cheap Target bookshelves that we got because they were cheap. Um, Aaron has a glass desk. That was probably like our most expensive furniture at that point. Um, and recently we uh, got a TV stand behind his desk for his monitor to be situated on. And those are basically the furniture that we bought. Everything else that like the wooden drawers that you may have seen when I was cleaning, the desk in that area, those were all stooped. We all found that on the street. The huge ass mirror that's in our room, Aaron also stooped that. Um, so, that, that, that's it, that's it. Fred does have the best furniture, yeah. For sure, he has the most real estate too. I'm gonna drop a little martini. I'm, I'm eating sticky rice, it's green because I cooked it in pandan juice. Um, and I'm just gonna pour a little bit more tahini on top to give it, I do have like a coconut milk syrup in here, but it's neither sweet enough nor rich enough because I guess I just didn't put enough of it in. So I'm just gonna eat some tahini in here. Ooh, and a Fred fur. Yum. Great seasoning. Iron board. Yeah, we don't iron. That's why we always look messy. We're not adults. You're, are you an adult if you don't iron? I'll never know. So here are my buttons. I got these like at a church thrift event a while back, I think, if I'm not mistaken. And here's the broken bracelet pictographs. 
I'm very attached with the bracelet pictographs because I've had these since high school. So I think I'm going to pick through some of them. And then I'll think about where on this overall I want to put them on. Where do we want, where do we want it? By the way, I didn't even notice, but this overall has a label. It's called Signature 8. Made in China. This is a size large. Uh, I couldn't find if it was 100% cotton or not, and I have not looked up this brand. It looks very poorly made, honestly. It doesn't look like a lot of handicraft went into it, but the fabric itself is good. So if anybody feels like looking it up, <laughs> here it is. We could put some on the butt pockets. Unfortunately, the butt pockets and the side pockets are not really deep enough for anything beyond like a penny. It was thrifted, yeah. $10 out of Goodwill. Um, so the pockets are there, but they're not quite functional. I, there's also a fake crotch stitch here. There's obviously no zipper, but there is still that kind of zipper crotch stitch. The waist looks really weird to me because it's a little overally and that it's kind of pouchy. So maybe we can accent the waist a little bit with buttons. Um, but yes, I was also thinking buttons on the crotch stitch. You're funny. We think alike. Um, yeah, it is a deal breaker for me too to not have functional pockets, but... I was in the mood of buying myself a souvenir and this was a wearable one, so. On the straps would be kind of rough because I have to loop the straps through and tie them to, uh, to basically, um, I guess, situate the overalls on me. So if I were to put buttons on there, they might get a little bit in the way. But naturally, yes, on, on, on the actual straps would be cool. Shoulder part of straps, yeah, that could be cool. There's also this whole pocket thing that's not really a pocket, but it is. It's, it's weird. This is a, this is a weird overall. I want it to look a slightly juvenile with the buttons, but not too juvenile. You know what I mean? Maybe here, huh? I would like two rows of buttons right here. This is a pocket for the vegetables. I love it. So if I were to wear this overall, and it would be like situated somewhere here because the straps will come down, I think I would like some buttons here. But I would also like some buttons here because I don't know if you notice because the, the stripes don't actually match up. Uh, again, back to craftsmanship. I don't think this was intentional, but th they did not line the, the stripes up. Didn't fix my book bag yet. That's like the top question today. Hmm. You know what? I'm going to pull this over me and see Why don't you, no, oh, my chat disappeared too fast.
Why don't you do a border of buttons where the useless pocket is? Sew a backing on the pouch for the inside and you have a spot for keys. So, sometimes I take your advice. I really want buttons here, guys. I just don't love this waistline. And I don't like the stitch. And I kind of want to use buttons to... I need, I need the mirror. Hmm. But maybe that will make it look un over all -sy. It's very serious. It's very serious. It needs more definition between above and below the waistline. Yeah, I know. So maybe we do a row of buttons on the very bottom of this pouch, like right here. Because of the seams that are connecting the top and the bottom portion, that might be too thick to sew through. But if we do a line right here on the bottom of the pouch, that could be cute, you know? A fanny pack around the waistline. Yeah, you guys are going, that's a lot of fabric, y'all. So we have these cute little pink buttons that could complement the theme very well. Very kiddish, you know, elementary. And then we have these big ass buttons that would definitely seal in the weird factor while being somewhat intriguing. And then we have these medieval pictographs that I'm very attached to that I think I want to go with actually because I think they really fit the width of the stripes. And I like how there's like little tiny gemstones on the top and bottom. They have a little bit of intrigue and a little bit of color, but the colors are muted, so they're not very attention grabby. Um, but yeah, I definitely like these. They're like a little mirror, you know? I can see myself. Curious what is beyond the kitchen while well, you're, you're in the beyond the kitchen part. You little snoop. I guess I should take it off if I want to sew. Okay. Let me undress. overalls cute for summer are you preparing your clothes for summer or something um i uh i don't know guys i just buy stuff you know people spend money in silly ways this is what i do it was under ten dollars so i bought it for myself you gotta splurge once in a while if you can Goodwill. I got it at Goodwill. In Pasadena, Aaron? Is that where the Goodwill was? I think so. Pasadena, California, baby. Big ass store. Very well organized. Now the question is, do we do one of these on every other stripe or every stripe? Do you think we should start on the blue stripes first and leave the white stripes plain for now? Or do we do neighboring? Neighboring might be too much. Oh, on the white. You want it on the white instead? I kind of want it on the blue instead. Why do people want it on the white? Um. Hmm. 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 Oh, 
it is a very different look on the blue and the white. Wow, you guys are giving me anxiety with so many options. But do I want to show off the buttons though? Watch us fuck this overalls up to the point where I don't want to wear it anymore. Do I want to show off the buttons? I think you might be right. Maybe white is the way to go. Blue. Okay, now everybody's clamoring for blue. Y'all are hard to please. <laughs> everybody's just like, no. Okay, all right, blue, Jesus Christ. Um, I'm a Libra, so we're known for not being able to make decisions. You personally don't see the difference, y'all. Do you remember when the dress controversy came out? It was like the, either you saw the, what was it, the white and the gold or the black and the blue? Did any of you see both? Because on different occasions, I saw both. I'm just gonna do this until we see the viewers plummet down from 179 to like 93 and then we'll start sewing. That's usually how long it takes for me to decide which apples to buy. This is so hard. Why are decisions so hard? They don't even matter. Okay, white is definitely more like proper fashion and blue is like, what the fuck are those buttons doing there? So it's like, what am I feeling? Do I wanna be super weird? Or do I wanna be like, I'm trying to be fashion, but I definitely made this at home with zero sewing skills. Hmm. Hmm. Blue above seam, white below. Whoa, that's a new idea. Holy crap. Like this? Wow. Wow, that's more metal. I like that. That's a metal look. Yeah. Por que no los dos? Somebody is like, why don't you lay it on the floor and lay it all out? Okay, guys. Y'all with the ideas. And then we got to decide, do we do the gemstones vertically like a scroll or horizontally? So many decisions. That's cute. I don't know if I have enough of these to do it all the way across though. That's the other problem we're going to run across. Yeah, I definitely don't. I think I only have a uh, nine. Is that right? 10, I have 10. See, the only problem is because the lines don't med line up, it's gonna start getting more irregular in, in occurrence. How many people did I lose? Oh, I lost five people. Damn. We gotta lose more before we start um, sewing, you know? Wow. This is gonna be a weird ass outfit, y'all. Ooh, and I, <laughs> this is also from a broken necklace. Bam. 
This is gonna just turn into a collage scrapbook overall. I also have these beautiful ones. So cute. Put the white one in the middle. No, it's too big, y'all. That is real sixth grader vibes. I'm past that point. Sorry. I think we're gonna go with this cold look, you know? I think even these buttons are too much. I do think I like the blue stripes more. I think... I like the idea of doing two rows of buttons, but the mismatch makes it very hard to space them out equally. Could just be that, you know? Put one where should be each nipple. <laughs> LOL. I don't know where my nipples align on this. Can I see the buttons you're using? They're not really buttons. Um, these are pieces of a bracelet that fell apart. They have like these medieval paintings inside them. They look like either angels or just ladies. This is why I need to study mathematics. Yikes. I don't want to study mathematics, though. Aaron, Aaron's a math geek sometimes. He watches YouTube videos on math. If we just do one row, I think I like it on the white. You know? But if we do two rows, I like it on the blue. So... And then we end with the two blue buttons. I like that. Could you do the rest of the buttons on top, like here? That could work too. Yeah, that's cute. Mathematics is actually nonsense created by a sect of jobless people who can now become mathematics teachers and other useless professions. <laughs> LOL. Y'all are funny. The blue doesn't work as well. I can do three blues because the rest of the two blue stripes are uh, uneven and on the seam. I honestly think when it comes to these, the white, the white works better. Um... That's cute. I just realized that some of these photos are actually repeats. So let's see if we can match up some that are not repeats. There we go. Okay. Oh, I thought they were all different. Look at me half my life down the line the real truth behind these buttons become apparent fun we have one extra I think I liked it that better. Okay. All right. Let's start sewing. I've always wanted to do something with these buttons, and now I can. There's also um, this pendant that Aaron got on his senior trip in high school that he totally got 
uh, scammed on. They they touted this as gold, and then he took it to a, a gold dealer a few years ago, and they were like, there is zero gold in this. And how much did you pay for this pendant? $12,000. No, not that much, but I think he paid a few hundred dollars for this. Being the stupid high schooler that we all were, I think we all got scammed, but he really got scammed bad on this. Um, so if you go to Spain, don't buy something that looks like this that's costing you a couple few hundred dollars. It might just not be gold after all. Even though it looks exquisitely done, it is a lie. It is a lie. Oh, I found one more. Wait, how many more are there? Is there any more? No more. <laughs> I'm sure not all Spaniards uh, rip off high schoolers, but uh, uh, unfortunately, Aaron met one that did rip off high schoolers. Do we have all the ones that I want on here? What do I want doubles of? Choices, choices. Okay, I will now remove these in the order that I have them placed so that I remember what I want where. And let us begin the sewing project. But first a snock. Wow, one hour into the stream. I might need to add um, some charge to my phone. What kind of lays? They're like a Chinese lays. I don't think I've ever had them before. They're apparently called yam crisps. So I, I think they're made out of some kind of... So it's actually called mountain medicine in Chinese, um, shen yao. And they're not actually the yams that you're thinking of. They're not sweet potatoes. They look like a stick with a very rough exterior that you peel off. And they're very slimy. They're almost like, uh, they ooze a sort of like okra sliminess when you cut them open. But actually, the first ingredient is wheat flour. And the second ingredient is palm oil. And the third ingredient is tomato seasoning, so. What items have you bought at thrift stores not clothes? Uh, usually utensils or plates, bowls, you've seen those. Joan, duh, I know my shirt is reverse, girl. I like it, don't you like it? Isn't this a cool neckline? Rather than just a uh, button down shirt, you can have a cool neckline and the buttons in the back. It also says contains Phenylalanine. I don't know what. F I don't know what phenylalanine is, but um, it sounds scary.
Hello, Greece. Oh, an amino acid. Like MSG? NutraSweet. Yes, a thrift store, many thrift stores closed actually, and Greenpoint, two different ones closed. Um, and I love them equally. But Maps was the more affordable one, and they closed without notice. I didn't even know they were closing. It's very sad. And a Salvation Army and Astoria closed too. Wasn't expecting that. But the pandemic really, really got a lot of things. Congratulations on your parents' restaurant in Long Island pulling through. What a feat. Some people also opened their restaurants in the middle of the pandemic, and I was like, how? How are you doing this? Also, why are you doing why are you doing this? Okay, um, the way I'm sewing these, they're a little bit crooked, but I think it'll be fine, guys. It'll be fine. I don't know if Kilo Shop, no. Yes, Fred does seem to like his little cat condo. Look at his little butt. Better view of his unobstructed butt. You're welcome. Joan, is that, is Kilo shop? I mean, if it's Kilo, it's certainly not in the States. It's where they use a measuring system that actually makes sense. Rather than pounds, ounces, miles, and tablespoons. The good thing about having two extra buttons is that if I end up sucking on securing these and I lose them, I'll have two to fall back on. Mostly in Paris. Mm. Aaron, do you ever want to go to Paris? Yes, absolutely. I don't want to go to Paris, but I do want to go to Mar... Mar wait. Marseille. Marseille? One button secured. Uh, 
Um, I like the more chaotic looking towns. The less polished ones. I feel like I feel more comfortable in them and I feel like they also have more for me in terms of both food and experiences and sounds and sights and people. I really like Naples. But I also like the smaller scale cities that aren't so chaotic and jam-packed with stimuli. Um, like I really enjoyed when we went to Italy, Genoa, one of my favorite spots. I really hated Venice because it was way too touristy. Rome was nice, but also I felt like they were so overrun with tourists that they really didn't like me there. Like they just got, I was just another tourist and I didn't feel very welcome there, which is fine naturally. But it's just like, if I get the feeling that I, I am not welcome there, then I obviously don't want to go, right? So I just feel like the bigger cities are overrun with tourists and I don't want to add to that. So. <coughs> Sorry. Just had a senior moment. Of swallowing my own saliva. Where were you recommending? Aaron, people are saying um, we should go, we should bookmark Port de Goud. I'll talk to you when you've recovered from whatever happened. I was, I was, I just choked on my saliva. Are you interested in writing it down? Uh, no. Okay, Aaron's not interested. I will remember it, maybe. No promises though, my memory is shit. Let's go back to the bottom. Yeah, we went to Spain, but we didn't go to Barcelona because it was quite a ways away from everything else. Okay, I would like to skip the more bourgeois places if possible. I just don't feel comfortable. Yeah. Very touristy places, I can skip. Because what happens when tourism is concentrated in these places is they change to cater to the tourist crowds, which then transforms the city too. So I would like to go to a place where it's relatively unfazed, you know? When we went to Portugal, it was uh, right when people were starting to like go to Portugal to be tourists en masse and it was still pretty nice. People were very kind. And I really enjoyed being there. I, it was unexpectedly nice in Portugal as far as the people went and also the scenery and the food. Um, I was just like, wow, people this nice exist. Um, Trouble in Paradise, I can't pull this needle through for some reason. Please? Please? Why are you stuck? Hmm. This hole is not very well formed. Okay, well, I guess we'll have to switch this one out. Womp womp. Let's see if we have one of those at the extras. We do. Yay. Yeah, um, you probably can't see, but I guess this was a relatively cheap-ish made bracelet, and there was one hole that was not big enough for my needle to pull through. What is the mural behind? Uh, it is a Japanese 
wood print that Aaron loves. I don't think we did the Camino de Santiago trail. I don't think we trailed in Spain. We just went to the, unless that's not actually a trail, I don't know. Um, we went to the bigger cities in Spain. We landed in Madrid. We went to Sevilla. Um, shit, where else did we go? In Spain? Yeah. Granada, Toledo. Granada, Toledo. Madrid. Madrid. Uh, and Sevilla. How many cities do you want to go to? I, people, people were just asking, and I was just trying to remember where I went in Spain. I really liked, yeah, I loved Sevilla way more than I thought I would. The culture there is like surprisingly much different than the other places that we visited in Spain. The tapas culture was kind of different than other places in Spain. Um, had one of my favorite dining experiences in Sevilla and my favorite comment cookie. Like the best thing that I loved about Spain was the nuns, the nuns who make the cookies and then sell it out of comments. And I was just like going ham on chasing after all of them. Um, and my favorite one was in Sevilla. It was delicious. It was like a, I think it was like something something cidre, like cider, but it turned out to be not apple, which is what I associate with cider. It was um, like a winter squash, like a pumpkin jam that was between shortbready cookies and it was absolutely delicious. I have to be honest with you, I looked so forward to the Yemas confectionaries, which are like this age old egg yolk based cookie and I hated them and they were so expensive. We got them out of this comment that was like selling them. You had to buy a whole kilo of them. You couldn't buy less. And so we bought a whole kilo of them and they tasted so sweet and they didn't taste like egg yolks at all to me. And I think we paid like 18 euros for it and I was just like hurting. <laughs> for weeks after I was hurting, I had intense regret of buying them. But I bought them, you know? You either regret buying things or you regret not buying things. So one way or another, I was bound to have regret. <gasps> 31 pence for a digestive, Holly? A dream. Where do you live again? I need to move there temporarily. Until I get sick of eating digestives, then I will move away. Are the lives improving your life as if allowing yourself to express yourself outside a commercial setup? I think so. I think the lives help me um, just share bits of myself that otherwise wouldn't come through and to destroy people's expectations of who I am because these lives help me hold space for myself while showing more accurately who I am outside of work and um, fills in the blanks for people who may want to fill in the blank for me. But also they are a way of telling myself first and foremost that it is okay for me to just be this version of myself. For now, who knows, maybe I'll change. Why are these lives, I'm not even eating right now. Here we go, we got a full row of them. Yes, their octopuses are intelligent creatures. There's a Netflix documentary on um, my teacher, the octopus, is that what it's called? It was a very good documentary. I got very emotional over a sea creature. This is sticky rice.
and I am dropping cranberry all over this overall. Okay, bottom row, here we go. What did we say? One, two, three, four, five, six, and then buttons on the end, okay. Let's go with the metal ones first. How exciting. I haven't done a craft project like this for myself since last year. I bought like a um, $5 jumpsuit that was meant for kids and I optimistically thought I would fit into it and I did not. So I ripped the sides open and I added extra fabric and I made it into a jumpsuit and I wore it like four times out into public and never again because it does not fit me anymore. Very sad. But it was fun. The project was fun while it lasted. Fred, you're snoring, buddy. Okay. What do you guys do with the thread that isn't long enough to complete a project? Do you just toss it? Is there any use for it? Once upon a time, I used to be skinny enough to fit into 14 to 16 sizes in like kids clothing, but I think it's time to admit to myself that I am 32 years old and I do not have that body anymore. Sadly. It's just such a shame because they make clothes for kids that they don't make for adults. And I love the clothes they make for kids. And I wish they made them for adults. But for whatever reason, I guess they don't think adults like me exist who want to uh, wear clothing with kids aesthetics. Are we talking about something that I can answer? Or are you talking about something else? Maybe you're talking about something else. Anyway, let me know if you had a question for me that I didn't answer because I didn't see you. I have not been to the UK. Aaron has though. He has distant family there, relatives. Oh, yes. Uh, I've never I've never been on a cooking show, but I actually, years ago, when Aaron and I first returned from China, I auditioned for a show called Worst Cooks in America, believe it or not. Uh, but I guess I was not sensational enough for them to include on the show. Good memory. 
whoever remember that. Uh, we met at a teaching fellowship training program in China. We both applied to teach for teach for China at that point, and neither one of us got it, but we both got recommended to smaller fellowships who then accepted us into their program. And so we all attended the training for Teach for China that year. And uh, we were basically in the same training cohort, and that's where I met Aaron. I wish I could turn this part out. It's getting increasingly hard to reach into the pocket. Are there really 180 people watching me so? The internet, it never ceases to amaze. I don't like scary movies, but uh, by the way, the fellowships don't exist anymore because China wanted to uh, uproot all foreign influences because um, they can't stand dissenting views. So there are no more teaching fellowships by outside programs anymore. Wompity womp. Ooh, I just poked myself. That's fun. Oh, that's good. I love being background noise. I think I even mentioned that in um, my description box for this live. I don't know about TEFL, I'm not a uh, good resource on other programs. I just know that mine no longer exists. And I know that Teach for China no longer exists. And that is where my knowledge ends. Oh, uh, I have not discussed the new game show where, uh, oh God. Yeah, that, that game show, I, somebody, Aaron showed it to me on Instagram and then somebody else reached out to me on Instagram about it. It's where like, what, what, what is the term they use for them? Anyway, social justice initiatives battle it out on a reality TV show to see who gets who gets their project funded and it's all it's all a bunch of shit isn't it I do watch TV but on my computer I don't really watch TV on a TV because the only TV-esque thing we have in our apartment is Aaron's <clears throat> monitor which he uses when he's on the computer but yeah we don't have cable or anything Thank you for the bless. What did you do after graduation? I went to China to teach on a fellowship. No tips for you. You have to decide what your life path is. I don't have advice for anybody. No general advice anyway. If you have specific questions, you can feel free to ask. I won't guarantee I have answers, but. Just know that not knowing is a central part of life and you will deal with it to the day you die. So if you are seeking answers, there are none.
The biggest lie, well, one of the biggest lies we've been told is that we'll understand things when we grow up. I don't know which adult decided to tell us that, or maybe if they just got lazy with not wanting to explain shit to children, but nobody knows when they grow up. I like that, what Melissa said. Do what grabs you, until then, do what's in front of you. Yep, that's basically it. That's essentially what I'm doing here. Is anybody snacking right now? What are you eating? I always want to know what other people are eating. Then it makes me think, do I want to eat that? Maybe I should get some of that in my life. I'm really enjoying this project. It is bringing me much joy. Ooh, carrot cake ice cream, lemon cookies, rice cakes, herbal tea. Uh, we, are, we are adding some flair to my overalls that unfortunately suffered a little damage in the wash, but no worry, we're making it our own now. Korean barbecue pork jerky. Mmm. Wow, everybody's eating something really good sounding. Frozen dinner. What kind of frozen dinner, though? Samosa? Ooh. Bummy sandwiches? Yes, Aaron and I had. My favorite one is in New Orleans. It's at a place called Dong Fung Bakery. It is mad cheap. We had the vegetarian one where they had like a soy based mock meat. It was beyond expectations. I wanted another one, but unfortunately the bus came and we had to go. Um, but that will forever be the best bomb meat I've had yet in life. So if, it, if you're in New Orleans, go check it out. They're also known for their king cakes when the season for Mardi Gras rolls around. I did not know that Chinese astrology and European astrology have the same roots. Fascinating. I don't know how to knit. I tried to learn in college. Was not very good at it. Became very frustrating. Every time I messed up, I was like, fuck this. Not doing it ever again. Um, and I, it was a part of my education class coursework, actually. They had us knit and learn to knit so that we could learn about something that's not academic to put ourselves into the perspective of learners. So it was a fascinating teaching vehicle, I think. But I, it was a, I was too much of a perfectionist at that point to enjoy the, the process of how much, it re, how much it revealed to me that I was not good at what I was doing and um, I did not pursue it as a full-time hobby. What game are you playing now, Aaron? Slightest Spire. Slight as fire. I don't know what game that is, guys. Okay, let me show you what we got. 
I still haven't put on my round buttons yet, but we got our medieval ladies all in a row here. That's pretty fun. I like that a lot. Definitely add some weight to this. Do you ever get approached when people know you from Delish? Yes, I do get approached and so far only by Asian women and mostly East Asian women. Um, I don't know if that's because the area I'm in or just because they are more uh, I don't know, maybe they feel more identifying with me, that they feel more compelled to come up. Or maybe it's because everybody's still wearing masks and maybe they recognize my face features a lot more even though half of it is covered. Um, because I would have a hard time picking me out with half my face covered. So the, the theory is uncertain, but I've definitely had, I feel like I've had like four or five folks come up to me. Still the sticky rice. Oh my god, Dr. J! Aaron, Dr. J's back! Uh, who? Remember we were so worried about Dr. J because oh. she said she wasn't feeling well and she was worried she had COVID and then she just disappeared? Yes. She's we, back! We were worried, yes. Oh my gosh, what a relief. I feel something like a burst inside of my chest. Welcome back. Are you all right? Are we scaring you? Are you the same Dr. J or are you an impersonator? I wouldn't put it past the internet to be like, everybody's worried about this Dr. J. I better make an account that says Dr. J on it and just pretend that I'm Dr. J. Come back and make everyone feel at peace. Are you who you say you are? Tell me what the last advice you gave me was. Prove yourself. Oh yes, you are talking about my canine. Um, I got a root canal on it. It feels weird. Like when I press where the root canal is, I can feel it. I can feel it. I can feel my gums more. I can feel that it's like fragile. It feels soft. Is that normal? It's been a month. I feel scared. The moment you come back, I'm gonna ask you for medical advice and opinion. That's the kind of person that I am. But are you okay? So happy to see you again. Hello, Leone.
get another opinion, like another x-ray. Oh God, your girl can't afford these things. I'm just gonna wait until my tooth falls out, I guess. Let me put this on for you. Is Fred balancing precariously? I don't think so. You're falling off, food. You're falling off a little. Are you falling off? It's a good chunk of you off of the house. What's happening? Hi, Freddy. And you are right, she didn't have COVID, Aaron. Uh, excellent. I didn't say she didn't have COVID. I said if she did, she probably wouldn't die. Okay. <laughs> she said you are right, she didn't die. Yeah, Fred got a lot of junk in the trunk. All these greenies, they stack up on ya. Huh? Do they? Do they stack up on ya? Look at that tail. Look at that fat ass tail. She says, good to know Aaron is still the same. Freddie, you're being so lazy, buddy. Wow. Okay, I'm gonna clean up my mess here a little bit so I don't step on anything that could hurt me. There's Fred. Now I guess if I wanted to, I could just sew this grommet on now, right? It wouldn't look the same, but I could sew it on if I didn't want it to be uneven. Are you interested in my clothing, Fred? Do you approve of the changes we've made? You came up, Dr. J, you came up in like consecutive lives. You only came up in a couple recently because I stopped going live, but every single live, somebody inevitably asked, is Dr. J back? Is she okay? Have you heard from her? So we were all very worried, indeed. Um, I got the sofa cushions from my parents' leather sofa when we moved and we couldn't fit the, the sofa would not fit into the doorway so we had to throw it out and I threw a fit because they never let me jump on the sofa because they considered it to be too nice of something for me to jump on. So when we had to throw it out, I was like, no fucking way, I'm gonna rescue it. Okay, that's my bling. Aaron, do you like my bling? I added bling. It's great, Jean. I'm gonna go get some water. Okay. Is it just me or is it getting hot?
Okay. I think I'm going to sew the grommet on them. Is this live long enough for you? Fred's gone off in search of food. He heard the refrigerator doors open. Okay. Are we gonna cook for dinner? I just eat all of my chips. Do you want to try these yam crisps? <coughs> no thanks. Okay. His loss because I do. All right, snack break. air in here. Fred's coming. Hi, Freddy. Oh, wow. So they look very textured and almost fluffy, puffy, foamy. They do not look that way at all in the package. They look very solid and thin, very, very thin. They look like baked Lay's in texture, actually. And they look like a very thin corn chip. Not gonna end in the next uh, 20 minutes, I feel like. Is 20 minutes enough? I think they are the same company. No interest. I love these. I love tomato flavored anything, honestly. Well worth the money. Sorry, Fred. Aaron, can I give you, whoop, scared Fred away. Can I give you a small bowl of this? Yes, thank you. Five good. Sure you get some before I devour it all. Sorry about that. Thank you. Pretty good. A little sweet for me, though. Very sweet. I love it. Yeah. Well. I think uh, a third of the bag, maybe 40% of the bag. The chips start here, and the bag is that tall, so. Bye, Ian. Say bye, Fred. Is it dangerously healthy? It certainly doesn't look that way. Half the bag is 250 calories with 43% of your saturated fat intake. So if I finish this entire bag right now, uh, yeah, that doesn't sound good. Oh, it was sarcasm? Okay, I'm sorry. It's really hard to read.
Hi, Fred. What you looking at me for? Um, these chips are like 219 or 209, something like that. Hi, Brandy's kid. Sounds like a lot has happened. It is uh, quite a mess on the back here because I do not know how to sew, but it's attached. Good enough. Now it has character.
I thought I crossed a crisscross tie, but it doesn't actually work. It just kind of pulls it awkwardly. So unfortunately we can't do that. What do you think, Fred? Do you like it? Do you think I did an okay job? Do you want to play with it? Do you want to play with it? Okay, well, you can't play with it now. Sorry. Fred, what do you want to be for Halloween this year? Do you want to be anything? you do have your fur coat it's a very nice coat i pay for that fur coat too you know all right let's look at our handiwork do we approve I have no taste either. Wow, oh, Fred. Okay, goodbye. What time is it? Is it time for dinner, Fred? Oh, guess what? It is time for dinner. Because we uh, went on our trip, Fred's meal times have been a little bit flipped. I'm going to give him some food. Yeah, I know, buddy. You've been waiting? You've been waiting for food? somebody falls. Ready, Fred? Come on then, bud.
I'm sure my mom is pleased. You can finally see Fred eating. I'm also eating. It's like dinner time for the whole family. Hi, Naco. I did actually return Fred's spoon to the utensil drawer accidentally, so it's somewhere in there. One day I might be eating with a spoon. Who are we talking about? The backlash on older videos. Who are who are we discussing? Oh, Jenna Marbles. What did she do in previous videos? going to say or do that gets me in trouble. Inevitably, if you put yourself on the internet, you will get in trouble. I remember watching her and her two little dogs or three, three little dogs. That was the first time I've ever seen a uh, greyhound in person and I was like, wow, how do those dogs stay alive? Their legs look like they could snap. Five dogs, Jesus. That was a fast meal, Fred. That was so fast. Hmm. Yeah, I didn't really pay attention to YouTubers during that time. I guess because I was uh, at the same time trying to figure out how it was relevant at all that we were still trying to produce food media videos in the midst of all of that chaos, injustice, and mass grief. But I probably will cook dinner, but probably not on this live. Um, Ready. Can I? Let me turn the plate for you, bud. There. Now you can access your scraps better. What a good eater. Cherishes every meal. Yeah, good boy, Fred. Going big and strong and pudgy. I see. Well, I hope she's made enough ad revenue to like be set for a long time, but. Mm. Done? Really? All good? It's a, it's a clean plate, y'all. That's a clean plate. I don't think I can fast for 12 hours. Good for you. If you like doing that, 
I'm happy. here for two hours so I'm gonna bid you goodbye what was that um and thank you so much for joining me on this random sewing and snacking edition of boring life with June and I hope you all have a great week and uh, I don't know I don't think I have anything else to say except Fred. Always give you a chance to say bye to Fred.